both rehabilitate native wildlife and do education programs, and that's why we have these birds with us today. These are all non-releasable birds that um, have temperament that allows them to be able to put up with all of us. <laughs> So, and they do about a hundred programs in schools and community, the community each year. So I'd like to introduce you to Carson. He's our peregrine falcon. He's been with us since 2004 and he came in with a um, fracture of his femur, which was repaired, but uh, unfortunately he developed some arthritis in the hip of that leg. So, and peregrines, when they hunt from the air, they fly up really high, up above a group of birds. They pick the one they want, they fold their wings, they plunge down at 242 miles an hour and grab the bird that they want to eat. And with arthritis in his hip, that wouldn't be a very possible thing for this guy. So we weren't able to release him. He flies fine, but he just isn't able to use his legs um, the way a peregrine needs to use his legs. So um, he eats bird, and so what we feed him is uh, Caternix quail, which is raised in captivity. We get it frozen, and uh, UPS delivers it, or FedEx, and um, eats about a half one of those each day. So we're gonna go ahead and feed him part of his feeding right now so that you can see um, how these guys eat. So if you wanted to see one of these in the wild, I would suggest that you go down to the Arcata Marsh and look around, first of all, at the metal towers that are there. And these guys will sit there sometimes during the day and just kind of hang out. The other way that you can notice one of these in flight is if you see a flock of birds and normally, you know how those guys just kind of fly in nice orderly patterns? If you see that flock get really chaotic, look for the peregrine. Because the peregrine may have picked out his favorite one and uh, be ready to hunt. Um, when they eat, they usually will sit somewhere like in a tree and you'll see feathers falling from the tree. And you'll get to see some of those feathers falling right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get his food, or part of it. Well, yeah. be eaten again at one if anybody wants to laugh. <laughs> if you just didn't get enough. Barn. <laughs> Normally he's not shy about eating in public. <laughs> I think he's pretty hungry right now. And he's a little distracted, that seems. He's a little distracted, yeah. Wow, this is cool. There he goes. And you'll hear the bones cracking. So, um, we are really fortunate to get to see peregrines okay. at all. Because in the late 70s, there were very, very few of them. Does anybody know why the peregrines' were, numbers were so affected in that time in the late 70s? And you said DDT. DDT, absolutely. So what happened is I wasn't actually poisoning the peregrines to death, but the DDT that was in prey that they had eaten would cause the eggshells of the females to become really super soft and brittle and so they would lay eggs normally and then sit on them to incubate them and the eggs would fracture. So there were no peregrines replacing the peregrines that were dying off. So eventually we weren't seeing them at all. And so when DDT was outlawed, then there was actually there actually needed to be a captive breeding program in order to bring those guys back. And when they were released, they were released into their traditional habitat, which is rock cliffs. They like to nest on rock cliffs. They didn't do quite so well there because other things had moved in, like golden eagles had moved in. Their territory had been kind of taken over. So someone got the bright idea to use skyscrapers in cities. They put nest boxes on skyscrapers and in the cities, what do they have that a peregrine would eat? 
Lots of pigeons, and everyone wants to control the numbers of pigeons. So these guys have done incredibly well in the cities. Um, almost every city that has a um, an active nest on a, a downtown building has put in a webcam. So in the spring, if you want to see babies growing up, San Jose City Hall has a wonderful website, and you can it's all in real time. You can watch the baby's house, you can watch the baby's feeding. It's really pretty amazing. So everyone's kind of falling in love with the fairies. So um, definitely check out that that website. So anybody have questions at all about this particular individual? The lower half of his right wing is missing. So they eat everything. They eat the, uh, the bones. You can hear the crunching. They eat the bones, they eat the feathers. And just like owls, they'll actually cough up a pellet about half a day after they eat. But in their pellets, the bones have been pretty much digested, so you really don't find anything interesting. But owls can't digest the bones, so if you find owl pellets around, uh, you can actually put together the little animal that the owl ate. But a falcon pellet or a hawk pellet won't have any recognizable bones. That's the call of an American kestrel. <laughs> So he'll be feeding again at um, at one. So if you didn't get enough, come on back. Thank you very much, and uh, feel free to ask any of us questions about the birds that we're holding.